Hi everyone, welcome back to the Clara CFO Group channel. Today we're going to walk through what QuickBooks Online is all about. So we're actually gonna do a really high level overview of what's included in QuickBooks Online. Now I did a video about the truth about QuickBooks. There's always pros and cons to any kind of software. So make sure you go and check out that. I'll try to put it in the cards above. I do want to say that when people are growing their businesses and they're trying to make sure that they have some type of transparency and they're trying to maintain good accounting records, you do need an accounting system. And so we are recommending QuickBooks Online as a great solution and lots of reasons for that. What I want to do is that if you're on the fence, you're trying to make a decision about which one is right for you, or you just kind of want to get familiar with it before you jump in, we're going to do a high level walkthrough of QuickBooks today. And so this is going to give you just kind of the overview of what you can do with it and what you can't do with it. This is not meant to be like a detailed how to for every little single thing. We're going to get into some more how to's in this channel. So if that's helpful to you, make sure you are subscribed as you're trying to figure out how to use the software and do a little bit better with it each time. This is really meant to be sort of like overall capabilities. What can you do here? Okay. So we're gonna just do a screen share and we're gonna get into it. If you have any questions specifically about how to do something in QuickBooks, put that in the comment section below because we're always reading those comments and trying to think about you know, what people want to watch and what would be helpful for our viewers. Definitely give me suggestions there as we're trying to figure out you know, which features of QuickBooks are maybe the most confusing and where we can be of help. All right, well, let's just go ahead and get into the screen share. All right, well, we are inside of QuickBooks Online, and this is a sample company that they offer so that we can test and play with the functionality of QuickBooks Online, and I can show this to you guys without sharing any sensitive information. If you are in QuickBooks, you'll see your company name up here, but you won't see this accountant tools. That's only if you have an accountant profile, but you will essentially see all of these things down the side. Now, some, depending on the level of QuickBooks that you have, you might have some additional sections over here, but this is kind of the basic. Just to kind of give you a brief kind of overview of what we see here, this is kind of the functionality of the different functions of the software that we have down the left-hand side. Now, if you used to use QuickBooks desktop, you would have had essentially a menu across the top. This is replacing that menu now and trying to make it easy for you to find things down the left-hand side. You also have the ability to do additional things from this gear up in the corner where you can look at your accounting and settings, accounts and settings, you can look at, you know, for example, you can set up your sales forms over here. You can see if you're hitting your user limits. You can customize some things around your POs and your accounts payable. And then you can also get into some um, advanced features like changing your accounting method, changing your fiscal year, putting in what you would like to see for your chart of accounts, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of customization that can happen with QuickBooks. This is one of the reasons why we like it is because it is able to be customized for an individual business's needs. To give you a high level here, when you first log in, you'll see this sort of kind of action items. And this is similar to what QuickBooks desktop used to have, but it'll kind of just show you sort of the overall workflow of your accounting system. This is not a place that I really ever spend any time, but this is this might be helpful for some of you who might be a little bit more visual and like to see, okay, I have 10 outstanding invoices, there's five bills I need to pay, and here's some transactions that need to be classified. And then you can also go to the business overview, and this will give you some actual visual data showing you know, net income. You can change these date ranges. You can also kind of see what your bank accounts look like at this moment in time. So this is a nice little visual dashboard to give you an idea. I always recommend people making sure that they're very clear that their books are up to date before relying on this information, because if this only shows what has been added into the accounting system. So if you have lots of transactions that haven't been added, your profit and loss numbers probably aren't correct. This is just something to think about when you're looking at your dashboard. So the main section of QuickBooks and kind of where all the information is coming into the system is through this banking tab. We don't really have any accounting records unless we have data coming in. So this banking section is showing us the banks that we have connected to the system. And when I say connected, you're going to set up an account and then actually link an account to the 
to your bank. And what this will do is actually pull these transactions directly into the system. So there's no manually adding any of these transactions. And QuickBooks, I haven't seen a bank or credit card to date that QuickBooks doesn't try to link to. Sometimes you'll have to manually upload a file and you can still do that here. For the most part, these connections are just getting better and better and better. So I haven't run into any issues with this, except for potentially some international banks in, in recent times. When these, and these are kind of cards based on your different accounts here, so you can flip easily back and forth. You can also flip easily back and forth like this, which is really nice. It's nice and visual. And then these are these individual transactions. This is the charge from Amazon was pulled for, or I guess this was not a charge. This was actually money received. So it must've been a refund. When you look at these transactions, it will show you detail here. Now, sometimes we don't know what a transaction is because the bank's detail is not enough. So this is where I remind you to do proper accounting and to keep up with all your receipts. So making sure that you have a receipt that corresponds with basically every single line item in your QuickBooks file is an ideal situation. There's lots of other software that you can use to help you with that process. There's a software called Dext, which used to be called Receipt Bank, and there's also something called HubDoc. And then even there's a receipt fe feature with QuickBooks Online as well. But for any transaction, you can always add an attachment if you want to, or if you just want to save your receipts separately so you know what they are and what these transactions are, be very easy to do. Now, you'll notice that QuickBooks will do things like this where it says match found. So it, if it sees a transaction and it recognizes it with an, another transaction, it will try to line things up. For example, if you paid bills here, this is saying, hey, we found the match of when that bill was paid and you can match it. But um, we're not going to get into the details of actually how to add these transactions. But that what I want to point out here is that this is where all the information comes in. And then you have to add it to your accounting system. And then it goes into the bank register. And this bank register, anything that's in the register has been quote unquote recorded at that point. And that's the type of stuff that will actually get into the financial statements. It's not in the financials until you take an action on it over here. So I just want to make sure that that's clear. Now, this banking section is kind of the key critical part. If you're hiring a bookkeeper, they would be in charge of kind of making sure all of these line items are going to the right place and that they're in the right category and they get put into the proper um, place. You can also connect Amazon Business and Square, which is new. And then you can set up rules to make your bookkeeping easier. So if you're all the time doing work with the same vendors, you can make those rules very easy for yourself if you're doing this bookkeeping yourself. And then they also have tags, which this is a new thing. We probably would talk about that in a different video. And then here's that receipt feature I was talking about. The banking tab is super critical. That's really where you'll be spending a lot of your time. Sales, this is all about getting paid, getting the money in. Who are your customers and who's paying you? In this situation, this would show all sales, either invoices or sales receipts or any kind of payments that have been received. This is really everything. But I spend a lot of my time in this invoice section with clients where we're looking at, okay, we actually sent out an invoice. What's outstanding right now? How much is it overdue? One of my favorite features is when you use the QuickBooks invoicing feature, when you look at it, you can actually see if a customer has viewed it. And this isn't enabled right now, but if you send an invoice, because if you send it through an email address, there's a little section that will show up down here that'll actually show if your customer has seen the invoice. So I really like that so that you can keep some accountability and make sure that you know that your, your invoices are actually being opened on the other side. So that's one of the things that I think is super helpful and not all accounting systems will do that. The other thing that's really great about the invoicing is that you can really customize it to look like you want it to look. So if you wanna add your logo and you wanna change the color scheme, you can do that. You can even design a custom template if you want to. Keeping track of all of these invoices is super critical, especially like in this situation for this client. These are not very large dollar amounts, but lots of invoices. So if you were trying to do this manually, it would get very, very messy. And you know you might potentially miss payments here or there. So that's one of the great things about keeping all of this information in an accounting system. You can you know directly resend invoices. You can share an invoice link if you like to send it in an email that way. 
and then you can print it obviously and send reminders and all that kind of good stuff. I really do like the invoicing option in QuickBooks. All right, and here in the customer section, this is where you can keep track of all your customers and then you can click on any customer and see what invoices and payments have been received over time. And this is really good if you have lots of different customers and you're trying to make sure that you are able to keep track of everybody. And then this does have a products and services section. So if you are selling individual items, you can keep a product list with SKUs. Now we have talked about like if you have very complex inventory, QuickBooks Online is not a great solution. You could potentially link other things with QuickBooks Online, but you know, this is kind of very basic inventory, but it does have the ability to have inventory and it's something that you can look into kind of depending on, you know, I, I really don't recommend using this for very long if you're gonna have a high volume of inventory transactions, but it certainly works if you are, you know, selling a few items here and there and you need to have individual SKUs or if you just have, you know, pretty manual inventory processes where you're selling things directly or you have salespeople that are, you know, directly adding SKUs to invoices, that's an easy way to do this. But when you really get into like full e-commerce and other applications for inventory, we do recommend looking at other inventory systems outside of QuickBooks that can speak to QuickBooks. It just seems to be working better overall. Okay, and there is now a cash flow thing that we'll have to go over at another time. I actually haven't used QuickBooks cash flow very much. When I looked at it, I didn't find it all that helpful. So we're gonna skip over it for now and go into expenses. And this is where you'll see all of the transactions that are on credit cards or bank accounts or outstanding bills or anything would be in this side. So um, you can look at vendors and you can see similar to what you could do with customers. You could see all anytime you paid a bill or you had a charge to a certain vendor, it would be here. So we always do recommend um, trying to get your vendors set up, you know, well so that you can see, OK, I know how much I spent on, you know, Amazon last year. or I know how much I spent on utilities from, you know, a certain utility company and you can look it up. But that is all tracked based on this payee line here. So if you skip over coding your transactions as they come in, you know, if they come in and you do not put anything in the payee, if you leave this blank, it will not show up under vendors for that same thing. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, QuickBooks does have the ability to do projects now, but we're not gonna get into that today. And it also has the ability to have payroll directly in the system. So if you wanna use QuickBooks Online Payroll, it is something that you can just add on and have it right here in your accounting system. It will book all the transactions for you. It can be pretty seamless in that way. We also like to recommend Gusto for small business payroll, and you can do linkages from Gusto to QuickBooks so that you can make sure that all your stuff gets coded correctly in your financials. However, if you like to have it all in one system, um, you can reach out to us because we do offer some discounts to QuickBooks payroll. So if you want to get some discounts on that, just let us know. You would have to email us about that one. We'll put some resources for getting started with QuickBooks or payroll in the description box below. And really one of the best things about QuickBooks is the reporting. They have lots of canned reports here. Most of these are not used on a regular basis. But you do have the ability to star anything up here in your favorites. I really always like to have a profit and loss and balance sheet really available. You have a lot of flexibility with the time stamps. You can change it between cash and accrual. You can do a quick previous period. You can look at it from a previous year. You can also change how you display something. So I love to run a monthly P&L on a regular basis. And then in this situation, I compared it to last year's P&L. I can also take that out and just see my reports and I can see month by month by month by month what my income looked like, what my profit looked like. Now, unfortunately, they didn't give us data for the first part of the year, but we can see on the months where there is data month by month how we're doing in a side by side with also a total, a year to date total. So I really love the flexibility of the reporting on here. And I would say I love this so much better than zero. I've, I've done a lot of reporting in Xero and it just doesn't seem to be nearly as flexible as this QuickBooks reporting. Xero has some other 
good tools to kind of manipulate the reports and move around the actual structure of the report. But if you wanted to move around the structure of the report, you would actually do that by changing your chart of accounts in QuickBooks. Easy peasy balance sheet as well. Really all these reports, you know, if your data coming in is right, the reporting coming out of QuickBooks is really, really good. So I just want to point that out to you guys. There's also a way for you to track things like sales tax here. So that's something that you can keep in mind. And then also mileage. That's also something if mileage is a big part of your business, they do have that as an available option. And then really when it gets into accounting, what you want to do is make sure that your chart of accounts is customized for your business. And so you can change the name of accounts, you can change the location of it, you can also add account numbers. I always like having account numbers and you can do that up in the settings section that we kind of showed you earlier. I think it's in the enable account numbers right there where you can turn on account numbers, show account numbers and save. You can adjust and customize your chart of accounts, which is fabulous. And then also this is where you reconcile your bank statements. Now, remember, you're supposed to be reconciling bank statements every single month. Don't let this go by and wait years or you know quarters before getting this done. If you have any kind of regular activity, you really should be reconciling your bank. Now, QuickBooks Online makes bank reconciliation so easy because they bring in all the transactions directly from the bank. Bank reconciliations used to take you know, anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours to get done when everything was being entered manually. Because if you, you know, missed one tiny little transaction, it would take a long time to find. But now it's really easy with QuickBooks Online to do really fast reconciliations. And then you can associate yourself with an accountant. And then there's also lots of apps that connect with QuickBooks Online. So you can look to see if there's other apps, especially if you're looking for something like, for example, Fathom, if you're looking for really you know, insightful dashboards or you're looking for bill pay systems or you're looking for you know, actually payment, payment systems, things like that, you know, your e-commerce, there's a lots and lots of things that work well with QuickBooks. All right, well, that is high level. What is QuickBooks Online? What, what are the capabilities, what's high level. We're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of everything on this one, but we'd love to know what do you wanna know more about. All right, well, thank you guys.